guys, it's Rob, and welcome to the Dodger Download. And now it's time for Dodger Baseball. So in just two days, pitchers and catchers report to spring training 2020, kick off the regular season just here in a short month or two. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm stoked. I'm ready. I'm pumped for the 2020 season. I think it's our season to come out and take what's ours. You know, so I've digested a little bit of the Mookie Betts and David Price trade, along with getting Gratterall, who I think is going to be a stud for our bullpen for the next five plus years. You know, I think he really is an underrated aspect of that trade that nobody's really given too much attention to. But check out some of his clips online. I posted some below. But he's got a 102-mile-an-hour sinker that just disappears. You know, a frisbee slider coming out of the bullpen with Jansen, Baez, Kelly, Trinan. You know, we got a bullpen on top of the starting pitching that we have. You know, so our 2020 is really starting to shape up as our year. So one last addition that I think we can make just because the Red Sox trade, the prospects that we were able to save that everybody in the industry thinks that should have been included for that deal. Um, with some of that capital we were able to save, we should really reinvest it into a controllable stud. Somebody like Mike Clevenger. Mike Clevenger is one of the stud pitchers from the Cleveland Indians. He has a career ERA of 3.2. You know, he has 563 strikeouts over 500 innings. So he's really just coming into his own. 2018 was his first real season with the gloves off. He had 200 innings, pitched to a 3.02 ERA. So, I mean, he's really getting into his own at that point. And then he follows it up with the 2019 season, where it was a little bit injury shortened with 126 innings, but it was an even better season had he had finished with a full season's load. Um, with a 2.71 ERA, but he set career high marks in specific key stats that are important for any pitcher and what especially what big league clubs look at now. He set career highs in strikeouts per nine with a 12.07 per nine, which is comparable to somebody like Verlander who had a 12.11 last year. He set a career low in walks per nine with 2.64 where somebody like Strasburg had 2.41 watts per nine. But this is the one that I really liked. His home run per nine was a .71 per nine. Now to put that into perspective, you had somebody like Bueller who gave up 20 home runs last year at a .99 clip. Somebody like Kershaw who set a career high in home runs allowed last year with 28 at a 1.41 home runs per nine clip. So in an era where home runs have spiked, balls are flying out of the ballpark, he sets a .71 home run per nine low. That is huge. But he also had a career high in BABIP, which if you guys aren't familiar, BABIP is batting average on balls in play. So it takes into account you know, the balls that are put in play, your strikeout rate, your walk rate. So there's plenty of optimism for positive regression going into 2020 if he can lower his BABIP. Um, on top of the low home run rate, on top of the high strikeout rate, on top of the low walk rate, you know, he pitches with the four pitch mitts, you know, with a devastating slider, you know, that's got one of the best movements in baseball. He's worked on getting that release point with the slider and his fastball to the same exact spot and numbers are actually showing that that's pretty much coming true, uh, that he's releasing it from the same spot. On top of that, with a mid to high 90s fastball that he's able to sneak right by you when you're sitting on that slider. So, you know, he's got the stuff to be able to be a front of the line rotation guy for us, uh, alongside Bueller, alongside Kershaw. So he's somebody that we need to put in Dodger blue. He's somebody that really sets us apart, really puts us over the top. If we aren't there already, he really does it for us and it really wouldn't cost us our future. It would cost a little bit of excess prospect capital that we really don't need at this point, that we'd be able to put somebody a stud like Mike Clevenger in Dodger blue for the next three years. He's controllable for three years. So the cost might be high, but it would be worth it. It'd be worth it for a budding ace who's just getting into his prime, just getting into his own, and would be controllable for the next three years. So I looked up some comparable trades over the last couple of years. And so in 2017, the Cubs traded for Jose Quintana. And in 2017 as well, the Yankees traded for Sonny Gray. So Sonny Gray had two plus years of control and Jose Quintana had three plus years of control. 
So Mike Clevenger is somebody that we traded for now would have three years, three full seasons of control for us. So I figure Sonny Gray and Jose Quintana, a deal somewhere in between the two of those deals would be worth it. So both of those deals ended up costing two top 100 prospects plus a couple extra throw-ins. So for Jose Quintana, it cost the number five prospects and the number 83 prospects plus three additional throw-ins. For Sonny Gray, it cost the number 85 prospects, the number 89 prospects, and two additional throw-ins. You know, so somewhere in between there is a deal that we can make for Mike Clevenger. So I put together a trade package that I think would be worth it uh, that deals from our excess capital prospects from the prospects that we don't really need with either replacements coming from behind them or you know current major league stars that we're no longer going to need them. It would cost our number four and our number five prospects plus somebody like Ross Stripling who really is excess at this point and really could use the opportunity to get a full-time role, a full-time starting gig uh, without having to worry about being the swingman. And then the outfield prospect that we got from the Twins, Luke Rayleigh. So our number four prospect is Cabert Ruiz. Cabert Ruiz is a great catcher. He has possibilities of a phenom. However, we won't see for the next couple of years. He did regress a little bit last year, but he has all the tools to become a stud. Uh, but at this point, we have Diego Cartaya, who's coming right behind him, who's a stud. All the scouts have already raved about him. He's going to be ready in the next couple of years. But in the meantime, we have Will Smith. Will Smith came up last year, and the Fresh Prince you know, delivered in big moments, uh, delivered right from the beginning, and the moment never looked too big for him. So I think he's the next catcher for the next six years, if not longer. You never know. We might extend him. He might be the guy for us. Our number five prospect we got in last year's trade that sent Puig to the Reds, Josiah Gray. Josiah Gray was the minor league pitcher of the year for the Dodgers system last year, and he delivered, man. He has a plus-plus fastball. You know, it has a lot of cut action to it, a devastating slider, but he's still working on that third pitch. And that third pitch is basically going to be the determination if he's able to stick as a starting pitcher or if he pans out as a stud ace reliever. Throwing in Stripling in there is tough because I love Stripling. But one thing about Stripling is he's just been that guy that's been on the fringes of our starting rotation and been in that swingman role where I think, honestly, he deserves a fair crack at a starting rotation. So going somewhere where he'd be able to start every five days, not have to worry about bouncing to the bullpen, I think would be a positive for him. So in, in the long run, I think overall, I think Stripling will be a little bit happier where he'd be able to go into a role that he knows what it is from day one, and he's able to pitch every five days and be able to see what he can do. And lastly, Luke Rayleigh is the prospect that we got as a part of the Gratterall trade. And so he projects as a solid outfielder, you know, a solid power, um, possibly a fourth outfielder, depending on how he handles AAA coming into the next year. Um, so he'd be solid. Nothing really special that we would need or that we would want to claim as untouchable. Uh, so throwing him in there wouldn't hurt any of our prospects that we've been grooming for the past couple of years and wouldn't really have to dig into that capital. So our rotation would all be controllable for years to come. So it would look like this. Bueller for four years. And like I said before in a couple of videos uh, before, he's my prediction for Cy Young. I honestly think he's going to have one of the best seasons coming up. Mark my words there. Then you have him controllable for four years. Then you got Kershaw for the next two years. Then you got Price for the next three years. Then you got guys like Clevenger that if we make that deal, we'd have for three years. You got Urias for another four years. You got May, Gonsolin, and Dennis Santana for the next six years. So we have plenty of top, you know, a stable of aces uh, with years of control to come that we have to rely on. So let's deal a little bit of that depth that we have, a little bit of that excess capital that we have in prospects, and be able to go land a stud that goes to the top of our roster, that really improves the top part of our roster, and not nibbling on the fringes, and really makes us that much better to where we are not just the favorites for the NL, we're the favorites for the World Series. And like I said, this is our year. 2020 is our year. We're here to take what's ours. So what do you think, guys? Like I said, I think Mike Clevenger is the way to go. Uh, do you guys like it? Tell me what you think. Comment below if you think it's Mike Clevenger or if we should go after some other controllable stud. 
Like I said, if we go after any guy that's going to really improve our team, he's got to be controllable. Otherwise, it's not worth it at that point. So comment below if you like Clevenger. If you like somebody else that we should look into, let me know. I can do a piece on them as well. Like I said, I'm going to start doing daily game recaps once preseason um, and spring training starts. Uh, once the regular season starts, I'm going to be doing instant game recaps as well. If you like the video, give me a follow. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and go to Instagram and type in the Dodger down low and follow me there as well. And until next time, guys, see you on the download.